Hi, I'm Hannah Marie. I am playing Samantha Thatcher, the spooky. Hello, my name is Jimmy, and I'll be playing Christopher, Christopher the expert. Hi there, I'm Stabbykins. I'll be playing Callum Rayland, the spell slinger. And hello, everyone. I'm Grizz, your keeper for the evening, and I'll be playing the town of Willoughby Falls and everything that lies within. Good or bad? Um, it's, no, it's, that's mostly good. What am I saying? It's Willoughby Falls. Um, and actually, we have some good news about Willoughby Falls players. Isn't that great? How are you doing tonight? Good. <laughs> doing good. What's the <laughs> That's the good news, Grizz. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the one I like. Chipper attitudes. Um, as of right now, there have been actually less disappearances in Willoughby Falls. Isn't that great? We've only had maybe one more crop circle than usual. Only two tropical storms have blown through, but didn't ruin anything. And I believe there hasn't been a mysterious house fire, a ghost sighting, and two reports of werewolves this week. Well, that's a new record good. record right there. Oh, oh yeah. Um, if anything, the conspiracy theorists in town are actually flipping the script and the lack of anything is actually the real problem. But I'm sure it's fine. Uh... And speaking of things that have been going around town, there has been the spread of the information and the rumors that the three of you are responsible for the rescue of the Willoughby Wallaby Boy Scouts uh, from the Shaded Vale National Park. Um, you guys, are, your names are being bandied around town. People know you a little bit better. Uh, maybe a free meal once or, uh, you know, more some people like let you go as you're trying to drive through town, like waving you, giving you waves because, you know, you save their kids lives. You're a pretty big deal right now. That means that the IRS will have a way easier time finding Callum. <laughs> uh, I guess the mini mafia is worth it. Well, then they, they saved a lot of kids' lives. And um, the forest wardens are currently being investigated. Um, we'll see what happens there. But it doesn't seem like the Shaded Vale National Park will be open anytime soon as a massive cleanup event has been happening over the past few weeks. As the National Guard and several other organizations have come through to clean up the park. Um, and, you know, you did a good thing. So you should be proud of yourselves. Uh, but, you know, it's Willoughby Falls and life goes on. And it's still summertime, so that means it's hot. It's hot as hell, Willoughby Falls. We've had all kinds of rain, but it's still hot. Like, it's like that thick humid that doesn't go away. It's all sticky and everything like that. Um, the ice cream trucks are making a fucking killing, but two of them have broken down in the past week, and ice cream has kind of, like, melted off the bottom, so not everyone's having a great time. Uh... But for the time being, will be falls is just will be falls. And that means more mysteries abound. Uh, the three of you were actually called by one of the sheriff. Um, wow, I have so many notes to scroll through. Uh, sheriff Holly Spencer. There it is. Um, Holly was working with you when you were trying to handle the theater situation, but she kind of dipped because she had an emergency um, and the kind of left the three of you to resolve everything and she felt really bad. But the nature of the emergency, she finally got to speak to you guys about. Uh, and uh, call, kind of called the three of you on your phone and asked you to meet up at Clucky's uh, for lunch, which she'll provide as long as you all show up. <laughs> um, uh Here's a question for the three of you. Would one of you pick the other two up? Would you all arrive separately? How would you go about this? I can't drive. Oh, okay. <laughs> I look like I'll be picking everyone up. <laughs> yeah, Cal doesn't believe in the conspiracy of vehicle ownership. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're wizards. We don't drive. Uh, so as you all are driving up, Stabby, you came up with the glorious idea of the institution that is fast food and chicken known as Cluckies. I would ask you to please describe this location for us. Oh, God. <laughs> it's the sort of location that you look at it and you immediately 
feel the grease. Uh, it, it, a lot of its design kind of harkens back to kind of that 50s era and onwards where like fast food like really started booming once like the innovations for uh like making those sort of meals kind of fell into place um there's a like a lot of like tin and steel in the construction and uh thankfully they've actually replaced the uh, lead paint that used to be there um <laughs> with a slightly less vibrant kind of like garish green and red and for some reason purple uh kind of blend um the the structure itself kind of has a sort of a frame uh an a frame shape to it with like this singular kind of overhang that seems to just almost kind of carve through the entire building and like just kind of like a weird angle <laughs> and naturally, they have the uh, partially charred and hyper bloated chicken mascot that looks like it's just been impaled on the entire thing, like some kind of fucked up uh, mascot cherry. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and y'all pull up on Cluckies, the, uh, the absolute eyesore that it is. Um, and the inside isn't that much better. Um, old upholstery, all like that fake leather that you would have found in like a, I don't know, <laughs> uh, a Wendy's uh, years ago. Um, oh, as you. the bar going through, uh, the, going through the middle where you have like it loops around, so you have people cooking in the center of it and kind of going out back. Um, uh, the waitstaff, it's uh the horrible blend of red green and purple but none of it's really like together the way you would want it's kind of like a weird sideways checkered pattern <laughs> um and they all look moderately miserable like they're i mean you know it's they get paid well it's, it's not a great place to work um and all along the walls you see memorabilia of the Willoughby sports teams, uh, famous people that have come through, people who've completed the 10 ton of clucky challenge, um, uh, and just past owners because the institution's been around for a while. Um, and for those interested, the 10 ton clucky challenge is just 50 pounds of fried chicken and whatever your drink of choice is and you have an hour. Um... And it's been completed three times. Uh, the winners of this challenge have not made it past year five afterwards. They've all passed away. It's kind of noted. Actually kind of crawled on the side of each of the trophies. Um, but yeah, that's Cluckies. And you see uh, Sheriff Spencer uh, kind of in one of the back booths. Uh, just kind of like gazing out the window. Um, like looking out into the trees. So now that you've mentioned it, uh, Glorious GM, uh, mm -hmm. how, how soon after did did they all pass from the challenge? Uh, anywhere up to five years. So like a year later, two years later, one of them was close to five years later. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I mean, no one's saying it's because of the challenge, but if you eat 50 pounds of fried chicken in an hour, you, you know, it's not healthy. <laughs> does things to a man <laughs> uh, yeah uh, <laughs> terrible thing Samantha just takes like a deep deep breath and just goes I smell capitalism and I feel sick yeah it smells an awful lot like chicken it's good because I'm hungry why am I not surprised that you eat here and yeah, it's uh, it's got the best fried chicken anywhere. Uh, by which I mean it's the only place that has fried chicken. Just the one. And it's right here. I'm, I'm very upset. I'm going to walk over to Holly and be very, very <laughs> perturbed with our circumstances. Yes, as you walk through, you smell the probably four month old uh, fryer grease that they're currently operating oh, with that, that allows the flood to get a deeper flavor according to the owners um, oh, no. Oh, no. 
What? Oh, it's gonna be stale as fuck. Oh god. Oh, fun fact it's about it's me. Game. In real life, I have worked beside a deep fryer for I had worked beside a deep fryer for a very long time, and there's nothing like that horrific smell of it getting changed. Um but yeah, you the three of you walk over to Holly, um, who seems to be kind of spacing out at the table. Sheriff Spencer. Oh. Ah. Hello, guys. Um, please take a seat. Uh. Gladly take a seat. Uh, she'll uh. wave over a waiter. Um, uh, younger guy, probably like know, <laughs> seventeen. Um, he has a full beard, but it's. The probably the patchiest thing you've ever seen, and just acne is not his friend. Um, oh, <laughs> I get your order, guys. Oh. Samantha pulls out a small Tupperware of uh carrot sticks from her purse and just says, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll take your uh number five mega cock combo, please. Oh. I hate you so much. <laughs> Sorry, we have to call it the jumbo cock now, Sarah. Sorry to bring it up to you, but that's what it is. Oh, uh, do, do, do you guys still do the uh, the mega cock sizes and stuff? <laughs> no, we no longer do the mega cock sizes because someone got really sick the other day. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, whatever kind of upsize you can do for it, that's fine. Yeah, Jumbo Gok it is, sir. No problem at all. God, what can I get for you, uh, uh, sister? <laughs> Looking at you, Jimmy. Sorry, Christopher. Sorry. <laughs> can, Jimmy, I need to compose yourself. Come on, man. <laughs> Jimmy, will back. <laughs> I need you to will back, Jimmy. I say the lines, Jimmy. Or I'll get the gas. <laughs> I just, I, I look at Holly and I'm like, can you... Can, you're the you're the law. Can you change this? Can you do something? <laughs> Christopher, look, oh, 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 just raise his, his, uh, just a sweet tea, please. I'm. That's all I need. <laughs> you want the mega cock sweetener in your sweet tea, sir? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't think that is a yes, man. He giggles a lot, doesn't he? Uh, the regular if you uh, oh God, Sheriff Spencer. Uh, no, I'll be okay. I don't need anything today. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate it, Charlie. No problem at all. I'll get it right up for you. Also, ma'am, I don't want to be a sticker, but you're not allowed to bring in food from the outside. It's kind of rude in most places, but I understand if you're trying to watch the figure. But Samantha stares at him <laughs> with dead, blank eyes, and he sees visions of his own death. I think I'm going to eat my carrots, please. Thank you. <laughs> they don't eat your carrots. Also, your eyes are lovely, by the way. Okay, I'll be right back with your order. And he shuffles off. Completely unfazed. What a lad. Did that man just tell me, yeah, you're watching your... I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. I look at the police and I say, you didn't hear that, but I'm going to kill him. Charlie's a sweetheart. He's... He has a full scholarship to Yale. He kind of gives a shrug. I can't believe they got rid of the mega cock. That's the kind of injustice I just can't stomach. Where's a man supposed to get his big cock nowadays? Samantha stands up to leave. Chris <laughs> just has his head in his... Uh, Mr. Callum, if you don't mind stop huh? saying that, the reason they stopped doing it, it's kind of offensive to most. It's just jumbo chicken. Okay. That's what it says on the menu. <laughs> it doesn't say it on the menu, actually, as she points to it, and it doesn't say that. <laughs> oh. Where is it? And do you want to know Because it's offensive. Okay. All Please right. tell me why we're here so I don't have to be here anymore. Also, if you didn't want to make it cluckies, we could have met somewhere else. It's just in the middle of town. I didn't yeah. know where we were meeting. I don't drive. <laughs> Okay. But I, but I like cluckies. <laughs> I know you do, Mr. Cal. Um, on a more serious note, uh, I 
Uh, Sheriff Mahoney doesn't know that I'm talking to you about this, but I actually do need some help. Um, the reason I, I had to leave during the uh, theater in, uh, investigation is because one of my other ongoing investigations had uh, popped off. Um, there have been a series of homicides in Willoughby Falls, which isn't news, I know. Um, that was not the people running around murdering each other necessarily, but murder does happen. Uh, but it's the circumstances that are rather odd. Uh, and she pulls out like a like a Manila folder and starts uh, pulling out mini folders for the three of you. Um, over the past seven weeks, there have been seven murders. Uh, each of a uh, each person was uh, attacked in some way, uh, usually out in the open, the, the street, uh, in the strip mall, uh, here at Clucky's at one point. Uh, I think one of them happened at a coffee shop down the road. Uh, I, it did happen. Sorry, I'm a little. Uh, but after each attack, after killing the individual, the perpetrator burst into flames and fell into a pile of ashes on the ground. And you uh, see her gesture to some of the crime scene photos. And it's true. You see uh, an auto, a, a, an assortment of different individuals from different ethnic groups, backgrounds, ages, all uh, dead on the ground. And next to each one of them is just a pile of ash that is roughly shaped like someone falling down, but it usually it's just piles of ash on the ground. Now, I, I've seen a lot of things. I've taken a lot of witness accounts. No one can really describe what happened. They just would hear shouting or screaming. They would come running around a corner and there'd just be a body on the ground and someone on fire falling to the ground and becoming fat. Is there any kind of a uh, pattern between any of the victims that you've been able to tell? No. Well, yes, but uh, like scratching. Like she looks, she probably she looks a lot thinner than the last time you saw her, and she has bags under her eyes, and she's like rubbing her nose. Uh, each individual was in. A descendant of our founding families for Willoughby Falls. But I, what I mean loosely descended, I mean, I had to, we had to hire out like 23andMe and Ancestry.com to come down here and definitively say they are descended because a lot of them, it's real thin in the bloodline, as far as we can tell. Um... Some of them are defended, uh, descended from the Whitaker family. Some of them are descended from the Wiggins family. And this gentleman, uh, the last person to die, was descended from Marcus Willoughby, the founder. Okay. Uh, that's pretty strange indeed. Uh, remind me again, how long have these strings of killings been going on? Here, I wrote it down. Uh, you should probably do so too. It's been going on for seven weeks. Does anything jump out of my mind according to that timeline? Anything that might have happened in town about that time? No. Not really. Nothing historically relevant or significant about any of the dates that these occurred on. I don't think you haven't looked at the dates yet. You just know there's been seven murders in seven weeks. You can roll to investigate the paperwork you have in front of you. I will go ahead and do that unless someone else wants to get ahead of me real quick. Can I nope. help? If you can help, but it was Fabby's idea. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to help. Let me roll some cool. Roll some cool. Oh, good. It's sharp. Okay. I can do sharp. I can do sharp. <laughs> Someone doesn't want to level up. <laughs> uh, 11. Nice. Hey, nice. Okay. How much am I adding? I believe it's take one forward. 
Yep. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So that is one hold. Okay. Uh, okay. It doesn't look like there's a specific question that will answer what I'm curious about, which is the, the dates. Um, I it's guess all how you, you word it. Uh, so, uh, a big head question might be, um, uh, you could kind of go with what is being concealed here. Um, I'd like to see if you can kind of like extrapolate anything hidden in all the numbers. Oh, that's fair. Okay. I'll go, I'll go ahead and do, uh, what is being concealed here. Ooh. Um, as you're reading through and going through all these numbers, uh, the dates themselves don't have any correlation, but the times are all weird. Um, in the sense that if you, because Callum is a pretty smart individual, if you, most of these are all in military time. Um, and as you're looking through, uh, the hour and the minute, because you got a plus one, uh, and you're just actually just looking for just weird shit. The hour and the minute in military time are always multiple uh, multiples of seven. Hmm. So it could be 21 hours, seven minutes. It could be like, you know, uh, seven hours, like 28 minutes. <laughs> Odd in that sense. Interesting. Um, is, is this in like a, a chronological order that he's noticing or just no. the fact that they're lining up in that way? No, it doesn't seem chronological. It's just like the times of death have always been at those time, kinds of times. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some of the murders happened within three days of each other. One murder happened like two and a half weeks after another one. It's just been seven murders in seven weeks. Interesting. And it's not like bunched up around like a particular given time of day or night, right? Nope. Okay. Man, that is weird. Well, uh, near as I can tell, the only thing I'm really able to gather is that some of these, uh, like, basically all these killings happen around, uh, military time. It's, it's, a multiple of seven, each and every one of them. But it's not in any particular chronological order, so I, I can't really make heads or tails of this. So we have seven murders, seven weeks all happening on multiples of seven when it comes to the time? Seems so. And it's all descendants of families of town founders. Mm hmm And you said that the 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 bodies combust or the murderers combust? No, the victims are fine. The uh, the victims are fine. The perpetrators are the ones combusting. Yeah. Okay. So I did remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, well, victims are fine it, arbitrarily. Um, I suppose it's worth doing some research. We can look into things at the library, see if we can check town records. Yeah, we can head back to my place, and that would be. I would have some documents there. All right. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Do you have any yep. worries about... I? It seems like seven is the key number, but do you think that there might be any additional attempts? Are there any other descendants that are known that haven't been victimized? I mean, sure, you have the Wiggins... Wiggins. 
Leviticus all walking around town. Like the actual direct descendants seem to be doing just fine. It's um, and those we have sort of eyes on, just asking them to check in every once in a while. But so what it's I mean distant by descendants for right now, yes. And that's what I mean by like. I'm not pushing that angle too hard because that's just a bit too odd, honestly. Uh, even for around here, um, I'm honestly more concerned about the bodies we haven't found. That is fair. These are ones that are done in public places, but if it's just a weak occurrence happening. It could have happened more times than this. Uh, so I'm I I appreciate what you did at the Shaded Vale because I was unavailable and I could not have handled whatever was going on out there. So I'm asking for your help in this. Um, well, we'll do what I, we can. I I do have something else I need to look into, which is. It's it's like slightly crazier than this, and that's kind of I'm not passing this off to you, but I do need another pair of eyes on this because I'm I'm kind of losing my mind. When was the last time you slept? Any other questions? <laughs> she doesn't look towards Christopher when she says that. Yeah, where's our food? My God. I mean, you're looking around, you realize like nothing's come out yet, and none of the room people are eating. <laughs> the hell? Service has really gone down. How we will take it to go. Fine. A minute passes. Another minute passes. Nothing. All right. I'm going to be right back, guys. Uh, he's going to get up, slide out of the booth, and he is going to head over to the counter. Let's give a little peek. Uh, behind the counter, you see... Sure, off the top of my head. Maxwell Norris, the owner of Cluckies. Uh, he is a formal, former NFL linebacker who came back to Willoughby Falls to help his dad continue the legacy that is Cluckies. He is a massive giant of a man, and he can operate deep fryers like nobody's business. Um, and as you kind of go over the counter and take a peek, you get kind of shadowed like the, the lights overhead are kind of darkened briefly as you look up and he's leaning over the counter. Can I help you? Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, I was just looking to check in on an order of mine. Uh, is it uh, ready yet? And he'll uh, hold up the, re the receipt. But there, there wasn't a receipt. Oh, there was a receipt. No. Fuck. <laughs> uh, had it taken like uh, 15 minutes ago or so. 15 minutes ago? Mm. And at the top of his lungs, well, from deep inside his lungs all the way out, someone ye he yells out over the entire restaurant, Hey! Oh, and I forget, and I forget again. Oh, I'll be right. One second. I forgot. Oh, one second. Here's the order, sir. And he's even kind of like stuff his way over. But then, oh, I forgot to give it to you again. I'm so sorry. Mm. It's, it's all right, like, you know. Don't worry, son. You'll get the hang of it. He like ruffles his hair and like. <laughs> oh, no, thanks. Dad. I appreciate it. No worries at all. It'll be right out to you. Or do you want it to go? Callum's ears are like ringing as his vision blurs a little and settles back in. Uh, what? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, to, to go. Yeah, you know what? Because you waited so long and you seem pretty keen in our chicken, I've noticed you around before. I'll give you the mega cock special. 
Oh, hell yeah. That's what Don't I'm you celebrate. About. No one can know. No one can know. Oh, all right. No one can know. All right. <laughs> Clap to on the back. Almost breaks your shoulder. All right. We'll get your food out in just a moment. Oh, I think it's dislocated. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but yeah, uh, back at the table, um, Mockers or Holly, like, put their hat back on and goes, all right, you two, I do need to get headed. Um, you have my number if you have any more questions. Keep these filed, uh, if they help. Um, what do? I, I have to, I have to go meet the mayor, so I'll be, I'll be, I'll be around. Sheriff Spencer, please try and get some rest. Well, if he falls and sleep either, she gives a tip of her hat and makes her way outside. Oh. What is it with health in this town? I do not know. Um, and about 30 seconds later, Hallam comes back with, uh, a probably like a 48 ounce to tall bottle of uh, the labeled fuckies on it uh, and th- that's the sweet tea for Christopher and his other hand is like a 30 gallon bag just full of food oh with like two God. ropes draw- drawstring bags like close it up tight so nothing gets out Yeah, I think I'm gonna be surviving the winter with this one. <laughs> yeah. Sam just shakes her head. It's like the end of June, but let's see how he does. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. So, mysteries afoot. How would you like to go about this? Well. Some initial research couldn't, wouldn't be too bad, right? Let's do some searching at the library, and then we can take what we find back to your office and see if the if the college has any additional resources. Yeah, that works. All right, sounds solid. Callum, you cannot bring that chicken into the library. What, what do you mean? <laughs> you can't eat in the library. I'm not gonna eat in the library. No, 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 that'd be simply too barbaric. I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. Scouts on her. No, I still can't tell, but now I know that you're being facetious. <laughs> hey guys, sorry to interrupt the conversation, but I need the table if you're leaving. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll head out. <laughs> I'll drive them to the library. <laughs> how how badly does the car smell of chicken afterwards? Oh, it is obscene. Like, just you're in the fryer. That's how badly it smells of chicken. Literally, right now. right now, I feel the urge to actually go and grab carrot sticks to like <laughs> cleanse my system because I can smell it. Mm-hmm. The entire way, you just hear him crunching down on chicken. The and you knew good. That's plucky. That's that good chicken. Um, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> sweet tea. <laughs> Uh, because you didn't say yes or no to the uh, extra shot of the the sweetness, yeah. is that it's real sweet? You know, it's a <laughs> oh yeah, okay. So this is definitely deep south. <laughs> so this oh. is a deep deep south. G sweet tea, it's a good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not from the south. All right, so uh, <laughs> so the Parker Street Library. All right. Uh, bu- 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 Looking back through all of the stuff, um, see, I think it was yeah. Actually, I think it was Samantha or Hannah. Hannah actually, who came up with the idea for the Parker Street Library. I did indeed. I like libraries. Awesome. Would you like to uh, describe the exterior of the Parker Street Library? 
So the library is one of the older structures in town. Um, it is primarily brick and stone on the exterior with these lovely uh, arched windows to let in a lot of light. Um, it's got a nice little um, overhang kind of area that's almost a porch, but not quite. Um, it's very classic. It's very old school. Um, it On the inside, it is floor to ceiling um, shelves that are just absolutely crammed with books. Everything isn't necessarily in the quote unquote right spot, but if you ask the librarian, they will tell you exactly where everything is, even though you have looked for it for two hours. They'll just like, re it's kind of like when you can't find something and you ask your mom and she pulls it out of the exact space that you looked in five times. It's like that. Um, it's very musty and a little dim on the inside even with those big lights it's almost like uh the light kind of gets swallowed up inside um it's like entering a, a cave that smells like old paper and ink but it's it's a very beautiful and classically appointed space with overstuffed chairs and big dark wood tables and it's it's a very classic library excellent and speaking of the librarian, as you enter, you do see uh, one Miss Eleanor Whitaker um, uh, seated behind, like, as you enter, there's a large foyer and there's, like, the massive desk that she works behind uh, with the addition of her four cats. Um, Godric, Gertrude, and Gunter, uh, Godric, Gert uh, Dick, Gertrude, Gertrude, Gunter, and Gabriella, her four cats. Uh, all black and yellow golden rock with big eyes that are always watching everybody. They just love people. Um, and Miss Eleanor herself, you see like a tall thunder woman with a uh, golden brown eyes. She has deep brown hair that's always in, tied up into a loose bun, always wearing a, just a simple black dress uh, under a cardigan. Um, simple, but she's always elegant. That's who she is. And she's also one of the last Whitakers as far as you're aware. Um, and she is seated behind the desk, uh, like kind of leaning back and just like going through like a really, the, the, the Parker Street library is very, very old, but so is the foundations underneath it where the old library was. Um, and you just see her just reading through this massive tome in a language you can't see from here, but probably is one that hasn't been spoken in a while, given her, uh, given the things she likes to read. Um. And you see her glance over her glasses as the three of you approach. And you see her, you see, as you're approaching, uh, all of four of her cats are on the desk and just like different uh, different areas, lounging, sitting up, looking around, or just sleeping. They all kind of like perk up and like look in the direction of the three of you. Samantha um, immediately brightens up and is like, ah, oh, the babies. Ah, uh, Christopher, Samantha, you have two more days in your books. I'll get them to you as soon as I'm done. I'm almost done, so we'll be. I'll, I'll get them to you in two days. As um, the two, go ahead. I'm just saying, Samantha, as the type A suck up kid that she is, pulls them out of her little bag and immediately puts them in the book return. Um, yeah, and you see her stand up, and she's, like, probably, like, six feet, so she towers over uh, probably, the, like, at least two of you, um, and just looks down at you with a uh, big, a uh, big smile, and you see the pearly whites that are always white as hell. You're always, you're always so, you, uh, I adore you. It just gives you the biggest grin. I never have to worry about your books, and that, that forms my heart. Samantha looks like she just got a gold star. Would you like a candy? That like gestures to the dish beside her. Yes, please. And I'm going to snatch one. Uh, the real question is, Callum, did you bring in the chicken? Uh, he didn't bring in the big bag of chicken. Um, <laughs> he's, 
but you, as you like, yes, as you like, as you're all thinking of that, you notice the cats are just staring at Callum. Oh no! She starts to sweat just a little bit, just just the tiniest little drop, and quickly wipes it away. So what brings the three of you to the library this uh this morning? Sorry, I had to pick up too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we just need some access to town records, newspapers. We're trying to cross-reference some events that have been happening lately and uh, see if there's a historical context. Town records? Hmm. Uh, as per, uh, attending to what? What are you looking for exactly? We have the, uh, so she kind of like gestures. So I'm going to go in a bit more detail about the library because two of you know it very, very well. Okay. Um, the Parker Street Library, uh, for everyone interested, but you don't have a choice. Um, uh, Eleanor has a small staff of college students that work here to gain uh, student credit. Um, and the library has a standing rule. You have seven days per checkout. If, even if you select several books, you have seven days for the entire checkout. And if you don't return it on time, you have another grace period of seven days. After which, Miss Eleonora will personally find and punish you. Granted, in the time that she's been doing this, and she's been here a really long time, despite looking like she's like, I don't know, 35, uh, it's, no one really knows what the punishment part of that actually is. It hasn't happened in like, I, I mean, now, as of like the past few months, it's been about 28 years since the last time that punishment has happened. Um,. But the punishment itself is kind of legend. No two stories are alike, and most of the people who've heard about it are much older now. Um, uh, library cards are seven dollars a piece and must re be renewed every fourteen months. Um, and paperback uh, are are over there in the small store library that's off to the side of her. The paperbacks are fifty six cents, and hardcovers are a dollar and twelve cents. Um, but it's just the oddities of the library. It's just how it's always been. Uh. And she kind of gestures to her left and goes, we have the town library here, of course, but we also have the town museum where you might be able to find more detailed records, but those records are usually under seal. So unless you tell me more precisely what you're looking for, I can't get it out for you. Let's do some looking, and then if we need to find something a little more specific, uh, we'll give you a ring. I'll be here. Oh, and um, doing underneath. These are the keys to the museum. It's not open on Tuesdays. Well, go over and grab them. Uh, thank you. Of course. Yep. Uh, you have seven hours. At uh, that, Samantha He's... pauses. Hallam like narrows his eyes. <sighs> Yeah, all right, uh, thanks. Uh, and he, he's gonna like turn and like sidebar with the other two. All right, am, am I finally like, am I losing it? Or has she been like mentioning a bunch of multiples of seven this entire time? Well, that the other stuff was in out of character, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, those are things you just know about the library because there, um, there are signs dating all of this. Yeah, no, seven seven hours is a bit specific. I, I'm, I'm actually going to turn around. I'm just going to say, w why seven hours? Well, it's always been seven hours. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll go take a look. And thank you very much. And I give the cat like a little scritch between his little ears. Yeah, Gunter gives a good old purr. Um. It like rolls over a little bit. The other three are still staring at Callum. Callum's gonna give him a wide berth as he uh, starts moving. Like you're a snack. Like you smell like something yummy. <sighs> right. Uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, knuckle down. Like you start. <laughs> like, like you got that fried chicken sweat or something. Ugh. <laughs> Callum's Nothing list down. of enemies grows. The IRS, <laughs> Boy Scouts, and library cats. It never ends. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 
uh, you make your way through uh, the main, one of the main hallways, and each uh, large room is like uh, dedicated to like the large swath of the nonfiction area. There's the adult fiction up there. There's the children's books. You have the media section. Um, and as you're going down this hallway, it opens up to uh, the mini town museum that uh, was made when the Parker Street was first built. It's mainly just glorifying the three uh, original founders. Um, you have Whitaker, you have Willoughby, and you have Wigan. Um, the actual first names, it's not so much as lost the time, but it's they're always kind of called by their last names, essentially, at this point. Um, and they ordered this place built, so they just want their last names to be the prominent ones, if anything. But, uh, but you see statues of the three of them kind of, like, taking up the majority of the center, and you see photos and pictures of their accomplishments, the uh, different wars they all took part in, uh, different aspects. You have the, uh, the, um, uh, Wiggins Logging Company. You have the Whitaker Mines, uh, the, Will uh, the Willoughby Investment Company that actually built the train lines going through the town when it was first founded. It's just glorifying, uh, the three founders. Third question. Is Whitaker spelled with one T or two? Two. Okay, thank God, because I was about to get really freaked out. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, I was about to get freaked out because I was like, Wiggins? Whitaker? <laughs> and now I'm counting everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's huge then. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's really fair, actually. Man, no, I'm kidding. Mr. Opportunity. Um, yeah, and uh, this... Uh, gilded displays. Uh, you see, like one of the, uh, you see one of the rifles of one of them, the coat of another one that's like covered in bear claws because he fought a bear or something. It's probably all tall tales, but you know, they had the money. So, I guess that we go around and until we have more specific queries that we can pull up specific reference on, I guess look for multiples of seven and see if any of the dates or anything like that cross-reference with the files that we have. That sounds good. It's a, it's a place to start, I suppose. Yeah, yeah that works. Yeah, let's... Um... Why don't we all take one name and see what we can find on each of them? That's fair. Uh, real quick, uh, Grizz. Mm -hmm. So I forgot to use my forensic divination, but I feel like this would probably only hit him now after really thinking about it. Uh, I would also like to use my free what magic was done here in relation to uh, the victims, not the victims, but the perpetrators themselves, thinking back on the uh, the murders that he uh, poked through. Uh, that's a rough one. I'm going to tell you to hold on to that. Okay, because that's fine. As far as what magic could have been done in those circumstances, unless you're kind of there at the scene or felt those ashes, you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at a crime scene photo for the most part. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because you can kind of like... You can assume magic was done to them, what kind or how it was like... Uh, what kind of spell was used and all that other um, magical stuff, like a uh, bullshit, like that, looking at a photo, you wouldn't be able to tell. Okay. It's not, yeah, there wasn't like a clear magic circle. There wasn't like the ashes were spread in a certain way. It very much looks like someone just fell into a pile of ash. Fair enough. Um, all right. Yeah. You can probably assume it was fire, but you've seen some weird shit these past few months. Another question that I feel like I should know as, like, Samantha outside. Um, does Willoughby Falls have any history with things like witch trials? Yes. Oh, heck. 
This will be fine. Everything will be fine. Uh, so who's taking what family? <laughs> you, okay. Um, okay. With that, can you... Let's see. Um... Roll me 2d6. Okay. A tan. Okay. Um, given the brief, um, you know a lot about Willoughby Falls. Uh, there has been one witch trial, uh, in Willoughby Falls history. Um, it happened about a year after the town was founded. Um, but during that trial, the individual whose name has been stricken from history was not found to be a witch. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll poke at that a little later. But while right. I, while I'm searching for those number references, I am just going to keep that in the back of my mind of references to this event, just in case, because spontaneous combustion town founders numerical significance it's just it's tickling at the back of my brain i could be barking up the wrong tree no you know, um sorry my voice actually cracked in water uh you're good uh so y'all just like looking around at the uh statues and stuff yeah yeah all right um i know you're all looking at individual uh individuals uh, but let's see uh i will allow whoever has the highest in the stat for it to roll investigate a mystery and whoever wants to help can help I think as a that, group investigation i think that's me with that too sharp yeah that's you yeah right. we're weird we're not smart so all right so just to investigate a mystery then all right mm -hmm. with what uh Yep, sharp and any fords. No, all right. Uh, well, I'll, you have a plus one because you know Bullet Beef all is pretty well. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, you will never fail, Jimmy. It is your curse. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a blessing <laughs> and a curse. <laughs> um, be your questions, and I will tell you some lies. All right, so let's go with, uh, of course, what is being concealed here? Uh, quickly, what is being concealed here is the uh, amount of bullshit that is being put on display right now. It honestly looks like old documents. It looks like old photos of the founders uh, all together, you know, breaking ground on new sites. But... Uh, this is all propaganda and yeah. all kind of all a lot of this was all put up directly after the Parker Street Library was, you know, built over the top of the old one. Um, so these are just a list of accomplishments. There aren't any list of failures anywhere in here. It's not what the display is for, but like, <laughs> what did they do wrong? As it was, like, what is the rest of the history here? Nothing. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you an example. Um, the, uh, which one did I say? Like, the, the Whitaker, uh, did I say Whitaker Mines? I said it. Um, yes, I have to look at my notes again. Uh, Whitaker has saved, like, 14 men from a uh, collapse in one of the mines. Single-handedly. Dug for days. Seven, actually. Dug them all out. Saved them all. Uh, Wiggins was known for clearing 14 or 28 plots of land by himself every year for logging. Real strong man. Yeah, this, this, this feels weird. Um, and Willoughby? I, um, that was 14 trains every day, loaded with people looking to settle down at Willoughby Falls. Then, okay. 
I'm noticing a trend. Yeah. Let me ask. Hmm. What happened here won't really apply. I have one more. That's the only thing that's. Um... Well, let's see here. What was it going to do? Where did it go? So involving the. Is there anything about like the witch trials here, by the way? Like, or is there no, is there no? no, okay, mm -hmm. just the founders. Um, I'm sorry, also, I put that, that earworm in your ear. Yeah, <laughs> unless I will say, unless Samantha said that out loud, I would Christopher have thought yeah. the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. This is, um, I would say where, let's actually do with what can it, no, that doesn't make any sense since I'm just involving. Just ask the question and I'll tell okay. you if it makes sense or not. That's okay. Uh, what can it do? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um. that's. One yeah, of the statue's that's... arms can move. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, well, at the same yeah. time, this is... Uh, as far as this display is concerned, what it can do um, is just mislead an entire town. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh... Here for you. See, what it's... there. I will. Uh, here, I'll help you out, Jimmy. Um, you. you have one more, right? Yes, I do. It's just one yeah. half. What happened here does apply. Okay, it will. Okay. Mm -hmm. What happened here? We'll just go ahead and go with that. What happened here? Uh, whatever information was displayed on all these, especially since you got a 12. Um, this is all propaganda. It's obviously misleading to people who just kind of like, you know, kind of know history and understand the town even a little bit. But most of the people in the town don't look that deeply into Willoughby Falls history. They don't need to anymore. It's been around for a very, very long time. Uh, but as you're looking through everything and the other, uh, and every, you're pointing out to everybody else, and they're also like following your lead, and investigating as well, they, everyone starts to notice that it looks like these were all altered after the fact, though. Like, someone put up the right information and then this was changed to what it says here now. Like, whoever, you know, wrestled that bear probably wrestled the bear, maybe, or something else happened. You're not quite sure because it looks like it was re placard or rewritten that story about the mine that's probably kind of accurate but not all the way yeah especially with Christopher leaving Allen knowing like old west type things where it's just like yeah people who are in the mines most likely a lot of them most likely died due to poor structure or something like that yeah, you can almost solidly guarantee those men did not live in that survive that mine seven days. No. Yeah, that 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 man did not <laughs> cut enough trees to kidding. clear all that acreage of land. That's just not possible. Right. Yeah, this is okay. Maybe I think we do have something here we can look at. Really? Because. From where I'm seeing, this idea is kind of falling flat. Well, it depends on who is changing the history here. This was all after the fact. This was all, it was all correct. Now it's not. Really? Well, uh, like, well, do we know how recently it was changed? That's the reason why I'm saying we could possibly talk to Miss Eleanor about, uh, about what's going on about like uh who all possibly came by to uh to the museum to possibly do like updates or renovate it or anything like that since that's a good idea 
I'd also like to see if we can get some... I have an instinct. It could be a wrong instinct. But... And she's going to kind of switch gears and... Something about spontaneous combustion, the multiples of seven, targeting distant relatives of the founding families. Something about it feels ritualistic. Yeah. And well, vengeful. Yeah. So well, the people who are tar- who are trying to target the families. Yeah, that's that is weird. Yeah. Huh. So perhaps we could get some information unsealed about the singular witch trial that happened in town. It, it, like I said, it might be nothing. Um, and she does, like, make eye contact with Callum because, ooh, history, history, history. But it's worth taking a look, seeing if we can get the information, and Miss Whitaker might be able to shed some light on the situation. All right. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Thank you for your support. <laughs> uh, what, do we want to head back to the front desk? Yes. Sure. Um, the cats. I lock up the museum, by the way, just as we're leaving, just to... Very wise idea. Um, yeah, and you head back to the front desk. Um, the cats are gone. Um, and I mean, they're cats. They do what they do. Uh, and Miss Whitaker's on the phone. Can I overhear anything she's saying before we get too close? Do you want to get a little closer and overhear what she's saying? What? Yeah, okay. I get a little closer and roll something. Yeah, I gotta roll some stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, I gotta roll something. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, let's see. I also have telepathy, so I can read thoughts if I try. Maybe read a situation? You want to use your telepathy to read a situation? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that might be a bad one. Let me, let me, let me look at the, the list. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, you can read a situation by using your mind powers. Yeah, by using my mind powers, but like, I don't think there's any good questions that are applicable. Actually, no, there's one question. There's one question that's super applicable. There's actually a couple actually on there. That would that's good just in case. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll use my mind powers to read (laughs) a bad situation if I can. By all means. Roll them bones. Mind powers, mind powers, mind powers. I will say you're doing this at a minus two. That's unfortunate. <laughs> it's all good. You're you're born to do this, probably. Mixed success. So, as you reach your mind out, um. And you're like, what is she thinking right now? It's static. It's really staticky. Huh. Just in general, as you're reaching out your mind and just in the library itself, it's like you're trying to like reach through and claw through actual like TV static. And you're not really sure where the fuck it's coming from, but it's a thing. It's like you're burning your hands, but like mentally. Um, and you're kind of like digging through everything as you're reaching, uh, and you do reach into her mind to ask a question. Um, as I'm looking in, I think my question is, are there any dangers we haven't noticed? Especially with the static, like I was going to try something else, but no, this is making me nervous. You have eyes on you. Oh. oh, and I know that from her mind. As you reach into your mind to start looking around, it's like someone's watching you actively. 
I look like, around. He feels that danger too, but in a different way. It's like someone you're like you have eyes on you. They're watching you. You need to be careful. Make a wrong move, and they're probably going to do something. And then you realize, oh, those are her thoughts. They're not my thoughts. Are they my thoughts? It's foggy. It's staticky. It's loud. It's it's getting real loud. I look around to see if there is anyone else in the... Are you still reaching into her mind before you do that? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Because I'm silly. (laughs) You got it. Uh, You don't feel anyone else in the library, but her eyes snap up to the three of you. wave you see your golden eyes gotta like squint and I'll call you back later thank you for your concern she hangs up the phone oh hi sorry to were we interrupting we tried to hang back it's quite alright how can I help you? Uh, we, we were wondering about the recent updates to... If there were any recent updates to the... Um, to, to, to the museum and possibly getting some information unsealed about uh, the, the... The witch trials in town after the founding. So... When you say the recent update to the museum, you see one eyebrow go over her glasses, and then the witch trials, you see the other eyebrow go over her glasses, and she just kind of look, looks bewildered. Um, I... Well, first, the museum hasn't been altered since it was made, and it certainly hasn't been altered in the years I've been running the library. As far as the witch trial is concerned, the only known information about it is that it happened in... There wasn't records kept about it. It was a few general entries that people were able to avenge about it. We, we didn't have a way to catalog anything and put, put it for in safekeeping when the town was first founded. That's why the first library was built. Okay, um, she looks to the others, and you guys have not seen Samantha actually genuinely this bad at speaking before. She's clearly trying to keep her cool, but she has been rattled. You have eyes on you. Um, do I feel where they're coming from? Like, is it that, like, standing on the back of my neck? Are you still attached to her mind? I'm going to say that Sam is hanging on because she's trying to get a hint as to what might be watching. Well, nothing's... You don't... They're, it's watching her. It's watching Miss Eleonora. That's the vibe oh. you're getting. And it's, yes. That's why I'm asking. It's, it, yes, it's, that's definitely. Why, okay, cool. It's getting stronger. And she's looking rattled. Um... Maybe you could you could come with us and we could show you um, show you what we're talking about. Why we think that there might be uh, some changes. Well, that's quite all right. I believe you, but I don't. Those the library is uh, the library only opens the museum two days a week. There have been no renovations there have been no changes made to any of those displays recently as in more than 80 years ago and you guys that uh, feel like elaborate on that it, it's not like someone went through and started scraping away at it and then rewrote it in your lifetimes this was changed ages ago oh okay 
understand. Clarify on that. Yeah, clarify on that. That's, yeah. Because this is like old, old town history that everyone believes and has no reason to second guess it because it's been around for so long. Right. Right. Okay. And yes, but um, as far as the... If you're looking for records that old, they would be from when the original library was sitting here and that was burned and that was burned down during the blaze of Parker Street. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, there's... Okay, there's um there's one last thing I think I, I might want to look at and then we can return uh your keys. I think I might have missed something. Uh but thank you for clarifying and straightening up. Um Are are you sure you're you're okay? Okay. So uh Christopher, tell him. Yeah. Yeah. One of you read a bad situation on Samantha because yeah. none of you are if you're picking this up, you're not doing anything. Yeah, I'm just worried yeah. <laughs> about situation. Just be like, okay, this is weird. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, she's not weird in her normal weird way. Yeah, yeah let me read you that. Either, uh, basically, I'm giving either one of you the opportunity to interject on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm gonna. Yeah. By all means. <laughs> okay. Really, Jimmy? Hi. Could you? Could you fail? Will I don't you fail? know. I don't know. <laughs> Jimmy, go tackle a bookcase. <laughs> Very oh <boy>. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's right. unfortunate. Um, Should have let Daddy roll first. <laughs> so the good boy point for me. <laughs> good job, Stabby. You're doing great. Um, yeah. We're gonna have uh, all the improvements. I. Uh, bup, 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 bup. All right. Um, I will. I will say, Savvy, there's nothing that's gonna happen to you at all with that roll. That was just to see if you're picking up on this at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's b- because Samantha's just acting weird, but Samantha always also just acts weird. Do, uh, Christopher, you do notice the way Samantha's acting, and you realize that Eleanor has been extremely tense this entire conversation. Yeah. Um, I'm just okay. gonna. I'm just going to pr- approach Samantha and say, um, I'm d- and just going to hand over the keys to Eleanor and say, I think we need to go ahead and go and um, again, I will bring those books uh, in the next two days. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we'll but we'll if we have any further questions, we'll be free to come by again and talk to you more about what's been happening. That's all. Chris, do you mind if I actually do something for that failure? Oh no! Oh god! Sure, Stabby. You know I love it when you love on failure. Sure. So, Hit it. so, so as you guys are getting really like hyper focused on like the clearly bad vibes that are going on around here, echoing off of the walls of the library, all of you hear crunch <laughs> I will slowly turn around as I'm I'll slowly turn around like what the fuck was that I do the exact same thing <laughs> completely inconspicuously not in any form or shape suspiciously at all uh you see a uh, callum in a very wizardly pose of uh tugging one side of his uh trench coat over and past his face kind of hunched over a little bit like some crumbs falling out mysteriously and his, his eyes just like flick between the two of you. Alan. Yeah, we're leaving, uh, and then just immediately we start trying to push. As as we're being ushered out by Christopher, I'm just gonna whisper very harshly to Callum, "You have just been ungrounded from the gas station. Do you want to be grounded again?" 
Um, crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> Alum. Yeah. You can't move. Well, uh oh. Huh? Wait, wait, hang on. What do you mean? You can't move. For the briefest of moments, something is blocking you in place. And then it stops. And you all hear Miss Eleanor's voice. Please come back again soon if you have any more questions or need more information. You know I'm here for you. Just please never do that again. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, my my grandmother sends her regards. I'll be I'll be seeing you in the next few days. I gotta pick up a, a, a new book that I have on order. Okay, bye. The virus librarian. <laughs> you three exit. The door shuts yep. behind you. The budget that Samantha has Samantha. for bribing the clerk at the freaking gas station is going to need to increase. Samantha, <laughs> are you still attached to her mind? Um, I will be attached until we are out of the building. It breaks before the door shut. Okay. You still have that static in your head, though. There's something in the library. What do you... What do you mean? <laughs> there, there's... There's there's something watching. Watching Eleanor. I, I couldn't and, uh, figure out what it was. It's not the, the cats or anything like that? No, it's not the cats. Well, at least whatever it is isn't a cat. It could be masquerading as a cat, which would be reasonably awkward. I, I've never experienced anything like this, correct? No. Why? I have lived with my abilities for many, many, many years. Nothing like this has ever happened. Mm. Did neither oh. of you feel it? As the three yeah. of you are standing there. Um... The Happy Days ringtone goes over Christopher's phone. <laughs> That's immediately reaching for my phone and uh, take it out and look at the caller ID. It's Sheriff uh, Spencer. I will answer. Uh, hello? Uh, yes. Um, Professor, I... I have some news for you. Uh, I think you should get down to the town green immediately. I need your assistance. Okay, yeah, I'll be right there. And the town, and where is it? The town, what? I think I've said last part. The town green. The town green, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll start heading my way towards the town green right away. He hangs up the phone. Get in the car, everyone. Right into the town green. And we are driving through the lovely town that is Willoughby Fall. To the town green. Um, the... It's like most town greens. It's several acres, small pond, several benches, nice walking path. Um, there's a basketball court, a uh, couple of gazebos. It's a nice area. Uh... And there's usually people gathered around here during summertime, just relaxing. It's a good, uh, it's a good afternoon to do so. Except to kind of off to the left of everything, you see a crowd of about 30 people surrounding something. Oh no. I'm going this to... doesn't bode well. Yeah, it really doesn't. I will 
turn on my yielding light to start getting out of the car immediately. I'm pretty sure it's nothing. When is it ever nothing in this town? Sorry. Yeah. Fair point. <laughs> Sorry, it's the jam. I was waiting for a response. I'm like, cool. Uh, I was so, like, hello? Yeah, I don't know. As you guys uh, all head on over there, uh, you begin to like kind of make out uh, the crowd and stuff like that. You can see uh, Sheriff Spencer. She's kind of like waving everyone off. Um, uh, and you also see a gentleman I think you all would probably recognize. Uh, standing relatively tall, um, full suit, even in the summer heat, uh, looks like a, like a tailored Tom Ford, black, he's got diamond cufflinks, like black, black hair, well trimmed beard, piercing blue eyes, uh, Dante Wiggins, heir to the Wiggins fortune. Um, and you see him, like, helping to wave everybody off as the crowd kind of disperses as you're all gathering up, and you see, uh, Sheriff Spencer, who... Looks tired before. She's really tired now. Um, uh, and she waves the three of you over. We're heading on over. Yeah, we head right on over. Um, and before you, you see a very similar imagery to what you saw before. Um, a uh, smaller man, probably in his late sixties at this point. Um. It's really light summer wear, kind of curled up into a ball, um, lying there in a puddle of blood. And about five feet away from him is a pile of ash. And now I spend that question. You want to Callum investigate just ignores with- everyone. <laughs> just <laughs> sticks his hand in a pile of ashes. You want to... Not a character. Do you want to hear what happened here first before you ask the question? <laughs> oh, yeah, that that would probably be important. <laughs> you know, what happened here? Yeah, spirits! Who's <laughs> um, the joke? Right. Uh, but <laughs> Sheriff Spencer is like, uh, I think you guys are coming so quickly. This happened um, maybe 40 minutes ago. She looks over it at uh, uh, Dante Wiggins. Um, do kind of uh, crosses his arms and nods. Yeah, so I was walking my dog here just a little while ago when I heard screaming. Looked over and uh, this older gentleman fell to the ground and this person burst into flames. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so. Did you happen to see who it was or a good, good description of it before he burst into flames? I saw a... I saw a pyre of fire. Sorry for that. And it fell into ashes. I couldn't describe who it was if I wanted to. Okay. But, uh, please. Jeff Spencer says you are investigating all of this, so I would Deeply appreciate your input. My father wants this wrapped up as soon as possible. Okay. I'm going to go into my satchel and, of course, uh, put on some gloves and hand hand them out to uh, Samantha and Callum as well. (laughs) Yep. I'll snap those gloves on. Alrighty. Who would like to help, and then who would like to roll investigate a mystery? Uh, well, I would personally like to uh, roll to investigate a mystery, just so I can get that free question, because I feel like it'll be really helpful here. All right, who would like to roll the help action first? I would love to help. So let's go ahead and do. Oh, something. Jimmy, roll something you're bad at. <laughs> I'm actually. Oh, pretty bad at this, so let's see what happens. He's gonna get a 10. Six out. God damn oh it! Oh my god. Yeah. How did yeah. you do yeah. that? Yeah, check it out. <laughs> look, look at the big brains Unreal. on Chris. <laughs> so take that plus one to investigate a mystery, my friend. 
I will. I'm going to Give investigate you. that mystery. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think we can gather what happened here. Uh, first, I will actually ask what sort of magic was done here before I do anything else. I am trusting that you want to save that for last. Okay. Please. Uh, let me think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it's, in that case... A, uh, sorry, this, Sabby, this, I'm sorry, I'm I was going to say it's a really good ability, and I want you to save it for last, because I promise you it'll come in handy. Okay. Uh, yeah. Appreciate it. Okay, so I'm thinking I could ask what sort of creature is it that would be applicable or was being concealed here? Because I, I, I think it's fairly obvious what happened here. <laughs> like, we already have all the details. Do you? Damn you. Okay, I'm going to ask what happened here. Oh, I meant the co- being concealed here. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, uh, that. Okay, cool. Um, as you're digging through it, sorry, I'm, I'm not <laughs> I'm trying to help you a little bit here. As you're digging through um, uh, a few things. One, it uh, it looks like he was, the the older man was stabbed with a small blade in his abdomen, um, but it's nowhere on the scene. Um, uh, you are able to find his uh, driver's license. Uh, it's Anton uh, Whitaker. Um, uh, you don't really recognize him from being around town. He's like an older guy, probably. I think maybe kept to himself. Um, uh, um, but his license actually does say he doesn't live in Willoughby Falls. He's actually from outside of town. Um, maybe he was visiting a relative. Uh, and as you're going through everything, um, it's not like you look at the pile of ash the three of you, and you realize that there is something kind of on the very bottom that you have to kind of dig through to get. It does just feel like a cold ash that you'd find at a, like an old campfire. It doesn't feel hot in the slightest. In fact, you'd swear it just has been sitting here for a long period of time. Um, and at the very bottom of all of that ash is a Parker Street Library library card. Fully intact, in fact. Something in Callum's mind clicks. Is this guy wearing a jacket by any chance? The old, old, uh, uh, Anton Wiggins? Yeah. No, it's like the end of June and it's like 90 degrees outside. Okay. You're the one wearing a jacket. <laughs> that is very true. Very true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, was someone else going to ask a question? No? Okay. Um, do you want to use your magic question? Yes. Ooh. Uh, what does it look like as you're going through everything? Uh, as he's sifting through, uh, and he's slowly sort of letting his eyes shut, um, he's gonna open up his third eye, uh, and there's just kind of this brief little flash from the middle of his forehead as, like, I have like this uh, star almost kind of begins to open up and take the shape of an eye uh, and he's going to peer through the remains and get a better idea of what exactly he's looking at. What exactly caused this? So the eye would reveal to you that there's a dark white light that you wouldn't be able to notice otherwise coming from that library card. And you see it's kind of coming from the name of the individual, but as you're like kind of reading over it, it starts to slowly, like the, the card stays lit, but the person's name seems to fade. Um, But you do see the face of the individual on the library card. Um, 
like an older photo. It, uh, yeah, you think it's the guy who makes you coffee once in a while at the coffee shop down the street from Quackies. Um, Wait, but this guy was from out of town. No, the the pile of ashes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't read that. The pile of ashes is where the library card came from. I see. Okay. Yes, you found the library card concerning. in the pile of ashes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. My good. Right. Sorry. You found you found the ID of who the dead person is beside the pile of ashes in his wallet when you were digging through it. Okay. Uh, has has um, the name already fully faded from the library card? Yes. Um, but the pile of ashes as you're going through it, um, this, uh, you've thrown balls of fire in your time. A lot of them. Good practice. This wasn't just combustion. Someone. <laughs> there's spontaneously combusting and then there's just starting an explosion inside of someone and having them just burst into flames it's a weird distinction but it's like someone saw this individual and wanted them to become fire oh okay it, it's not a spell which is frightening in its own thing you just someone wanted it to happen so it did so kind of like this weird reversal of causal effect essentially yeah oh all right as you're sitting there like looking through everything you kind of get the idea of uh whoever had the, whoever did this if they wanted all of you to turn into a pile of ash They'd have you do it. I have a question. Sure. Do I see any spirits wandering around? No. Interesting. Okay. Um, while Callum is searching through the remains, would I be able to start up a little spell and use some magic? Well, it depends if you want to do that in front of two civilians. I'm gonna say yes. Okay. People already know that Samantha and her grandma are very weird. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever, I'm weird. <laughs> People have called them witches before. True. Um, uh, yeah, what would you like to do? Um, she's going to do like a pared down version of what she did at the camp. She's not going to do her chalk, um, but she is going to sit and close her eyes like meditation style, and she is going to attempt to observe another place or time. Yes. Okay. That makes six sense. Oh no. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh you'll love to see it. Um Okay. So in lieu of chalk, um, she is going to trace the path like she's going to rest her hands on her knees and be tracing those familiar like glyphs and patterns uh, there kind of to center and focus herself. And they said 40 or so minutes ago, she's going to try to go back uh, to witness what might have happened. Okay. Uh, and then obviously there's a glitch. So, uh, you do go back in time. It is, uh, Batman transition. Um, and, uh, you're kind of off to the side. You realize that you're under a tree, kind of overlooking the green. Um, and you do see Anton Wiggins kind of, uh, just walking across the field. 
Um, you see that he seems to be walking with a purpose. Uh, and as you kind of like looking over way off on the other side of the green, talking to like several individuals, um, with a with a little coon hound just kind of like at his feet, standing there dutifully, um, because he loves his dad. Uh, Dante Wiggins is talking to people. Um, and you see that Anton is walking towards him, but he still has like well more than enough of the green to walk to get to him. Um, before you hear a shout, uh, and you see this, um, yeah, it looks like the guy you used to get coffee from at the coffee shop, uh, just kind of come out of nowhere. It feels like, it's not like he was teleported. He was just taking quicker strides than Anton was, came up and stabbed him in the abdomen. You think you don't really see an implement to do so. You do see the blood come out of Anton's side. You see the hand motion. Or the barista kind of take that back um, and looks to the sky for a moment and bursts into flames as Anton falls to the ground. Okay. And Mr. Wiggins has been not paying attention, not looking, minding his business. Well, you weren't looking at Mr. Wiggins when he that incident occurred. He was still on the other side. If you want to look over to see if he noticed. Yeah. He doesn't. Um, so okay. he, but you do hear after like a moment or two, you scream. Okay, 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 okay. And Batman transition, and you're amongst everybody else. Who two people are staring at you wide-eyed, wondering what the fuck you just did. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, but don't seem to be saying anything for the moment. If anything, yeah, Dante just not looks. Say anything. <laughs> uh, Dante looks perplexed, but doesn't say anything. Spencer's like, man, not more weird shit. It's kind of a look on her face. <laughs> like, man. <laughs> um, but. Uh, she just like shakes her head Did you, I, I don't know what you just either of you are doing but do, can you are you getting anything out of this if you uh, want results you can't interrupt my process I thought you were done there's more to the process than just the actual thing itself uh, out of curiosity, Grizz, would you mind reminding me what the white line Callum saw on the card? Or coming off of the library card? It was a white light. White light, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just... It felt like a source of power that someone had put on the card to make the card do something to someone. But the power is fading and you can't get a read on it. Like whatever the card was supposed to do, it did. And now it's just disappearing. Uh, does he get any weird feeling off of the library card if he like wraps his hands around it as if it were a weapon or like a handle? No. Okay. You're a smart person, Callum. You can kind of get the idea that whatever was done to this library card it was made to make it incredibly inconspicuous. Oh, well, uh, man, uh, we did this. this. One second, before we do anything else. Christopher. Yes. Do you have any questions or do you do anything during this time? Um, during this time, of course, it was 40 minutes ago. So uh, I'm going to just infer, but I'm going to also ask uh, 
So this happened 40 minutes ago. What what is the current time? Uh, fuck you, Jimmy. Uh, it's almost <laughs> one. <laughs> I don't fucking. <laughs> uh, it's almost uh, Dante's like it's almost one. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to just infer it's one of the multiples, basically. That's that's all I'm trying to make sure of. Oh no, we're nowhere near one of the multiples. As of, oh. uh, well, I mean, oh. the multiple would be two o'clock, but it's not two yet. It's thirteen. Okay. All right. Okay, this is okay. So, all right. This is weird. All right. Um, but that was pretty much the only thing I was trying to find out was like what the, if it was lining up with the others. But my so this is the only weird one, basically. OK. Well, what if in. A little before 14 after. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I wasn't really paying attention to the time when I was trying to figure out who murdered him. Uh, no, no, no. It's it's all good. It's just the coroner should be here any minute. They were backed up on something else. Well, we know who it is. We know what happened. We don't know why. Do I still hear like that buzzing in my head? Mm-hmm. I heard what? Mm-hmm. You do. Sorry. Okay, because I just heard bzz, 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 and I was like, "Is that the buzzing?" <laughs> no, um, no. Uh, it is. It's about as strong as it was in the library, honestly. And I don't feel any eyes on me. Well, you haven't looked. Oh, do I feel eyes on me? <laughs> uh. If you want to make a roll for this, probably read a bad situation, you're more than willing. Or, sorry, more than capable. Okay. I would love to, please, and thank you. Yeah, no problem. Ha ha ha! Uh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, 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 in fact failed yeah it doesn't feel like it now oh thank goodness everything's fine <laughs> Are we sure about okay? I don't say that out loud. <laughs> okay. Um, you see Samantha kind of tense up, but then her shoulders relax, like like she has done a, a sweep and everything actually is fine. If 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 you tout that <laughs> that shrug and shrug and relaxation, <laughs> by all means you can roll to read a bad situation. Guys, no. I can now get a thing. I got all the experience boxes. I I I trust. I trust Samantha. <laughs> you got it. You know, I'll I'll read a bad situation. Why not? That yeah, seems to be thanks. their relationship. <laughs> I trust Samantha. I don't fucking trust Samantha. What do you mean? <laughs> Guys. <laughs> hey. Hey. Got they can, I did it all. All right. <laughs> Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? You have eyes on you. Where do I feel them coming from? You... Like from above you? Oddly? (laughs) 
Yeah. Is 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 this after I dropped the uh, the library card, or while I'm holding it? Well, you just thought about it now, so it doesn't really matter which. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still holding the library card? Uh. Yes, he's going to set it down and see if that feeling changes. Not in the slightest. In fact, if you thought about it, you probably have been feeling this the whole time. Oh. You know what? Uh, fuck it. Balls to the walls. He, he, can, he, can, he can take the heat. He'll take that smoke. Uh, he's going to look up. Mm-hmm. You have two more questions, by the way. Oh, I thought I only got uh one. Oh no, I I get I do get three on a ten. Yes, you do. It's important. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, all right. In that case, uh, what's the best way to protect the victims, given everything that's been going on? you think about the information you have about how the bodies burst into flames. You think about the way these uh, people have been being murdered and you start to realize gathered everything gathered that we've had other than maybe the shopping mall and inside the, uh, inside the coffee shop, those were very open areas inside And then everything else was very much outside, like on a street corner and in a field like this was like everything's been outside or places with now you're thinking about it really high ceilings. Really high ceilings. And I'm assuming that might include places that would have would have had skylights. I mean, maybe the mall. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. I think it's just the, the high ceilings is the important part. Don't I wouldn't worry about the skylights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I okay. see what you're thinking though, but it's, I don't want to worry about the skylight. Good, good, good. Um, in that case, oh, what's the biggest threat, Grizz? You, you're looking around, you look at the sky, but you don't really notice anything. You're like, all this happened outside. And you kind of look to the, you look to the cut, like you kind of glance over. Um, the skies are clear. Well, that looks like a silhouette of a large bird, though. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, oh my God. You look back up and the skies are clear. Oh. Um. Hey, uh. <clears throat> out of curiosity, uh, do either of you know if we pissed off any, uh, Big bird spirits recently, or uh, anything like that? Not that I know of. Unless Clucky's has feelings. Okay, you know what? And he, uh, Dante finally speaks up. I don't know what the hell you all are doing. I was kind of hoping Spencer had some people that were actually going to try to attempt to do something, but you're all just kind of staring into space and doing weird magical whatevers. Okay, so... Uh, Spencer, call me if you have anything. Looks at the three of you. I have to get to the library. I have an urgent situation that I need to go take care of. So, oh, thank funny. you all. We were heading there. Yeah. Glad to hear it. I have to go get my dog and run to the library now. So, please, continue your investigation. And you see him hustling off uh, towards the parking lot. And Spencer's just, like, rubbing both temples with her hands, like... Can you give me anything, please? And 
backing up, you realize for like the past maybe four or five minutes, you actually haven't said anything really. <laughs> We've been working. We can't entertain people while we're working. Miss Samantha, this is my job. Yeah, and this is my job, and I'm trying to do it. And I need you to give me anything that I can help you with yours. What are you seeing? You're going to think I'm crazy. I am going crazy, Samantha. Look at me. And <laughs> some deep bags. Her eyes are kind of bloodshot. Probably way too much coffee. And her hair's slightly a mess at this point. Well, uh, somebody put a whole lot of juice on this library card here. Uh, whatever was done with the body here, he pokes a little at the ashes. Uh, they didn't just explode. I think all their blood literally turned into fire and uh, literally ignited the rest of the body. And uh, libraries, the librarian's definitely involved in this somehow. I have a feeling there might be a bird about here that uh, also has a, a wing in all this. See, I keep going with all that, but where'd the bird thing come from? I could have sworn I saw a silhouette. And plus, all the, well, most of the deaths where all these murders took place... It's either been places with high ceilings or uh, basically Alan. outdoors for the most part. Alan. Yes. You still, you still see the silhouette. It didn't go away. Oh, uh, is it? Is it like moving or flapping? Yes, or? it's moving around. I never said it went away. You just can't see anything in the sky. <laughs> uh, all right, which, so... <laughs> now, that you, now that I'm, we're pointing this out to you, the silhouette was kind of near you moving through the sky. You see it heading in a direction. Is it? Is it the direction of the library? No, but it is in the direction of someone heading there now. Oh, no. <laughs> we have to save him. Yeah, we have to save him. Uh, <laughs> Get down, yeah. Mr. President. <laughs> Dude. All right, he's gonna start sprinting off. <laughs> so, Samantha, in all seriousness, I know that was a joke. Do you actually shout something? I don't know what's going on. Callum is the one that knows the shadows. You got it. Uh, going yeah. toward him, unless I've noticed it. Uh, yeah, at this point. Because you see okay. him like whip his head around, and you just see this like large bird shadow just going along the ground, and you're like looking around, like. There is nothing in that sky. Okay, I will say, Callum, 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 Mr. Wiggins! <laughs> uh, yeah, and you you see him, like, he's, I don't know, probably, like, 300 yards away at this point. Like, see him turn around on his phone. What? Um. So... Uh, Callum, you still have your eye up. Yeah. I would say. yeah. Um, and you would see a thin white streak hit the ground in front of, well, where just behind Wiggins now, where he was about to walk into an impact on the ground and smoke. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Did it look like it came from where the silhouette was flying? Uh, the silhouette is probably halfway between the two of you, but shadows and heights are working in weird ways. Oh boy. Samantha just goes, run you pompous <laughs> idiot, run! <laughs> Uh, as he's running <laughs> after the guy, uh, he's, he's gonna look at his shitty watch real quick. What time is it? Oh, ah, uh, like 107. She's gonna go into a full fucking dead sprint at this man. 
Uh, and he's he's gonna Mr. President him. <laughs> Excellent. Uh... <laughs> that actually kind of broke me for a moment. <laughs> what? I do Knock like him. that we're all seeing the same thing in our mind's eye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um... Roll to kick some ass. Oh god. Yeah, because okay. he just needs well, I mean, well actually. No, roll to um Protect someone? Well okay. So here's the problem with you trying to Mr. President him. He's still probably two hundred and fifty yards away from you, even at a full sprint. Because you just noticed that they started running after him. Okay, that's right. I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. How about I use a little bit of magic to do one thing that is beyond human limitations? Oh no. By all means. This'll go so well. Listen, it worked once before. I'm sure it'll work again. Hell fucking yeah, let's go. This is so rude. <laughs> He's gonna do the same trick that he did. Uh, from last episode, he's oh, gonna gather. You did issue that guy three harm from doing so. Oh, <laughs> you know what? This guy looks tougher, probably, despite the fact that Calvin isn't really looking at him very well. But he's pretty sure this guy's tough. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you push down in the dirt and rocket your way. High speed, well, about a full football field to careen into this guy. And damn, it's a president! <laughs> um, that's poor bastard. Uh, <laughs> this poor guy. You did roll a 10. Um, are you using magic in this circumstance to prevent either of you from getting damage in the process? This time I'm going to say yes. Okay, cool. Um, then miraculously you careen into him and go into a full tumble, rolling to the other side of the field, much closer to the parking lot. Um, and Christopher, as the man says, while he's rolling, similar to what you all saw a second ago, there are three more streaks that come out of the sky and start pockmucking the ground. That's fun. Uh, can I roll to investigate a mystery? This would be reading a bad situation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I help? <laughs> no. Oh. This is all kind of happening in a hurry there. Yeah, hey, that's fair. That's fair. That's a success. Well, a mixed success, but a success. Uh, so my question is, uh, what's most vulnerable to me? What can I do? These are shadows. How do I take them down? Uh, ooh. Vulnerable to you. This is revenge for eating at Clucky's. <laughs> this is actually really difficult for me. What is? I think. Like, even if it isn't damage to them, if it's like, how do we keep ourselves from getting hurt by the, like, no, 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 I yeah, don't know. No, no, yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, no, no, yeah, but, sorry. Pretty, uh, if you could find a way to shield yourself, 
Um, because Callum said it all very quickly, but this thing seems to thrive in, op uh, in open areas without a roof. I scream at Callum, Callum, get him in the car! And I grab Christopher and I start running towards the parking lot, and <laughs> hands over my head. Um, yeah, sorry. I was like racking my brain because it's like, you're kind of in its actual elements. <laughs> no, you're good. I'll even, if, uh, say, I, say a young child is walking around with a parasol, I'm stealing that crap. That's mine now. I will give you a plus one forward to the next thing that you do as uh, I'll make up for that. Because I was like, that or you kind of where it wants you. All good, all uh, good. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, no, it's a rough one when we have these specific questions. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Christopher. Yes. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> I'm just looking You're at... You're a smart guy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm just uh, <laughs> what the um, let's see what the, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can um, I'm going to try to so let's see a read a bad situation I think that might be what or you have abilities that you can use my yeah. guy that you don't use very often prepare to work past uh, oh yeah let's try to mm, let's see if I dealt with the, I'm going to try to roll for draft past um if I've um yeah I'm going to try to roll my on my to see if to, this is something relevant or to be able to see if we can help fight this or yeah absolutely yeah. So here you know we go. I'll, gi I'll give you a plus two all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. we have, we have 11. Success. Um, so I'm going to ask what when I dealt with this creature or one of its kind, what did I learn? And um, so far long ago in the and the, the young investors, adventures of Mr. Watson. Um, there are monsters like this, but this was kind of like back when, when you were traveling through Europe, mm -hmm. um, that you can encounter these kinds of things very specifically. A lot of fire, wings, mm -hmm. way up in the sky. Oh, vengeful. Yeah. vengeful. Okay. Dragons? That doesn't sound right. Yeah, that doesn't. But a lot of it sounds right. Yeah. Second Weird. question. Yeah. Yeah. Second question. Uh, second time I'm asking this. What black magic do I know that could help here? gonna say that you can ask a different question because nothing in oh, this yeah. exact circumstance that you would oh, be yeah, able yeah. to access would help you in this moment. That's um, right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, do I know yeah. anyone who might be behind this? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, this does seem like a dire situation, actually. Oh no. And everything around you kind of seems to dim. Ah, uh, son of a. As out of the corner of your eye, you see Magma once more. Magma, Magma, Magma. He's eating a Freezy Pop. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Watson? I'm doing fine, Magma. Oh. A little bit of edge to your voice today. Didn't talk to me like that a few weeks ago. Uh, it's it's nothing personal. I'm just a little hot right now. And the 
leg is acting up. <laughs> yes, I can see that's why he didn't run after everyone. It's... Have you mentioned it to them yet? Not really. Don't see why. Oh, hello, fellow hunters. I can't use one of my legs. Sorry, if you need to chase after someone to save someone's life, I won't be joining you. I... Mm. I've yeah. seen that you're dealing with a very old acquaintance of mine, though. Oh. Hmm. Yes. Looks at the freezy pop, looking at you innocently. What are you? What? Well, let me get. <sighs> mm hmm. What do you want, Ma? Do you want to make? What do you know of this guy? Or let me guess, I'm going to have to make another deal to get that. Well, I, well they're trying so hard. I'd hate to spoil anything. Mm. How about this? If you want my help in any circumstance, I'm here. And if you want a little bit more mobility, I'd be happy to give it to you. And you know what? This one's on the house. You see him like. Like uh, his finger towards your leg, and oh, that feels good. Yeah, feels feels like normal for a brief uh, moment. Yep. Mm. Don't, don't say I didn't forgive you anything, Christopher. I won't. Yeah, trying to. Thank you. You're very welcome. See, was that so hard? I am truly oh. here to help you if you need it. No, I understand. I just... Just think about things later on. That's all. Oh, don't you worry, Christopher. When I watch your leg, you'll know. And when that day comes, uh, well, I will, of course, honor the bargain. The way things are going, I may not actually get it. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Yeah. I am ever so happy I woke them up. He seems like step out of your vision and things kind of go back to the way they were, where it's like this brief moment of pause that you have. And I'm... Um, Dragons? Yeah. And Dragon. Wallaby? Yeah. That seems weird. <laughs> Dragons. But you slowly start seeing the world speed up around you as you need to make a decision. I'm just going to run after, um, start running after Callum and uh, Samantha. All right. Um, so if you're running to try to go after them, roll to act under pressure. And yep. since you're not as stiff as you were a little minute ago, thanks to your friend there, mm -hmm. I'd say you have a plus one to this. Under pressure. This one forward. And. Mm. <laughs> Samantha. Yes. So. You went running after Callum and uh, Dante, and you're like, get down, Mr. President! Like, Get him. Well, like, take cover, Mr. President. Oh, okay, you got it. You got it. But you didn't feel Christopher starting after you immediately. But as you're running as fast as you can, uh, you know, for a guy who clearly doesn't work out that much, and I don't mean clearly, I mean, he just doesn't seem to have the time. He goes whipping right past you. Suspicious. 
far springy than it was a few minutes ago, that's for sure. Very but, suspicious. Uh, yeah. But Christopher, you do make your way over there pretty easily. Yep. And I'm just going to try to pick up uh, Callum and uh, Dante. And you do that with more ease than you think you would. Yeah. Oh, man, like, that was... What the fuck? What oh, Jesus? What are you doing? What's happening? Look at me. Look at me. And he's going to like call him up and shake the guy as well as your last names, the names of the, la- the founding fathers. <laughs> uh, Callum asks calmly. <laughs> good reference. Good reference. <laughs> um, Jesus. Uh, well, as you're shaking him and asking that, you realize you do realize that he is Dante Wiggins, the son of Reuben Wiggins, the mayor. My God. <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> He's gonna start hauling ass with him in tow and toe uh, and Christopher. <laughs> Yeah, Samantha, you're able to catch up because there's this brief moment of him shaking the hell out of Dante for no other reason than can. Did you not hear me say get his ass in a car? Um, yeah, you managed to throw his ass in a car. Um, Samantha, as you're rushing over to the car that the three of you took, you look around. Um, silhouette is gone. Oh, no. Okay. But Callum? Yeah. You still feel those eyes. God damn it. This is a goddamn Tom Ford. That's a, my fucking God, Jesus. My suit. Okay. Stop sputtering. You're being kidnapped. Let's go to the library. What the fuck you mean I'm being kidnapped? Why are we going? Ah, oh, Jesus. Fine. Hey, hey, by the way, Grizz, uh, his suit very much has a big <laughs> pair of like grease handprints in his suit oh, in the fabric no. now. No. <laughs> you tossed him directly onto the bag of chicken. Well, not only that, he was he had also been handling the chicken too this entire time. So, uh, yeah, uh, that suit's fucked. <laughs> No, it definitely is. Um, yeah, well, I'll take my own damn car. I need to get to my goddamn dog. Well, just get off, out of here. What's up? First, what was going on with the library? You said you needed to go to the library. Why were you going to the library? None of your goddamn business. Get the fuck away from me. Jesus. Just slap him um, for no reason and grab him by the collar. This is not a game, man. People have died. Let me go. Now uh, you listen here. No, I'm a if fucking three of you wizard. To me, I am a Wiggins, and you will let me go. We are trying <sighs> to save your life. If you go out in the open, you're going to die. I won't. Then let me go, or you will regret it. I let I him go, but mm-hmm. you get in the car. Uh, Christopher, when he says, or oh, you will regret it, there's a growl in his voice that makes the wood in your legs shiver. Oh. Mm-hmm. Huh? He brushes himself off. I'll get there in my own damn time. Do you see him walk over to uh, his Lincoln, uh, where his little dog is, climb in and start the car? I whisper to Calum, honestly, at this point, I kind of don't care if he dies. Okay, I'm just going to You're her. welcome for me saving your life. Quick question. When you say little dog, is it Chihuahua? <laughs> I don't know if it's just there. Yeah, you got a little head. coon hound. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All dogs are baby. Just a little baby. Oh, yeah. He's a yeah. hairy baby. Um, but yeah, he doesn't speed off. He's driving a Lincoln, but he doesn't leave. We better get to the... I think we need to get to the library because I think 
something's going on with these with it let's with drive and talk yep <laughs> sam kind of like rolls out her shoulders and callum i think you're rubbing off on me and i don't particularly like it that was Once. that was a, a high stress moment i did not intend to get that intense but also i don't like that guy I'm trying to keep most of the chicken all to myself. Crunch. <laughs> Ew, it's been flattened. That's disgusting. That's like something else that you see there, Callum. What? As you're kind of like going through the bag and trying to pull out chicken, you realize most of that chicken's been eaten in that wing that you're holding. Whoa. And as you start going through that 30 gallon bag of chicken, oh. it's gone. Oh. It looks like big bites have been taken out of that chicken. Um, large, gnarly bites have ripped it apart, just went in there and grabbed and ate that chicken up. What are the shape of these bites? Name the shape of betrayal, Grizz. Large. Are they... Mega cock sized. Oh my God. God uh, damn it. <laughs> no. Oh. Jumbo? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. We are currently driving while this is yeah. going on, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Just want to make sure. If you want to take that more seriously, you can investigate it if you choose. I'm going to investigate the shit out of this. This is some bullshit. Somebody ate my goddamn chicken. Investigate that chicken. That's sad. Watch me weep. You don't need to ask any questions. That's fun. Um, As you're digging through that bag, you find large ill. Probably like sides of like three quarters mashed together. Some of them are black, some of them are brown. Doesn't make any sense. Sorry, say that one more time. Which part? (laughs) What you're (laughs) describing. Okay. You find large scale about the size of three quarters mashed together. Some of them are black, some of them are brown. Scales? That's is what there said. any yep. chance that these are similar colors to, oh, I don't know, say a cat? No. Thank God. I don't want to deal with dragon cats. I mean, some are black, some are brown, but yeah, they're just scales. Wait a second. How, how, the bag was in the car. Mm-hmm. Are we being Jurassic Parked right now? Gosh. How's that? What do you mean? Is the Velociraptor in the kitchen? I mean, you're in a car. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, granted, you're in the car. I mean, it's a four person car. One of you's in the back seat, two of you are in the front. You don't have, you can't see all of the car when you're driving. I'm like, I'm twisted around, like looking at Callum, inspecting his, his chicken and the scales and just. Can I, can I roll to investigate? <laughs> what he see, saw is what you're currently seeing. The dragons have gone too far this time. My question, Callum, is are they still here? Oh, uh... They were invisible in the sky. <laughs> That's a good point. Grace is laughing so much. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use magic. I'm going gonna, sure. I'm gonna to try to observe a place back in time. Oh, no. Sure. I'm going to find out who the fuck ate my chicken. 
Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Singular wizardly focus. No one eats this man's chicken and gets away with it. <laughs> Fuck no. Cool. So you go back in time. Um what to what point are you going back in time? How much time passed between uh, them stepping out of the car and them getting back in? Uh, it's like 12 or so minutes. It's been a while. 12 or so minutes? Okay. Let's go back. You know what? Let's go back seven minutes. Sure. The car is undisturbed. What about the chicken? You can't see the chicken. I mean, I can't see the chicken. <laughs> you can't see the chickens in the back. <laughs> well, okay. I, I see the bag, though, right? Yes, the bag looks like how you left it in the car. Okay. All right. And you know what? I'll make this really easy for you. As you're messing around with time and just repeating this up a little bit, at no point do you actually see the bag messed with. You're choking. It starts to occur to you because you already had chicken in your coat. You didn't check the bag chicken when you got in the car. It happens sooner. Oh, no. Hmm. You cocked it up. You cocked it up, Callum. Unbelievable. The true tragedy of the evening. Um, yeah. But yeah, you find your way back to the front of the library. Um, is uh, Dante Wiggins already in the, the the car park? You don't see his car, no. That's some... I'm going to head in. Um, and Callum, do you still have the library card? Yeah, you said yeah, you I it. do. Huh? You said you dropped it. Yep. Oh. Well, I'm going to head in and I'm going to have some magic just sitting in the back seat as I'm ready to confront the librarian. Okay. Do the other two of you follow? I know one of you is kind following. of... Yep, I'm following in. <laughs> One of you is mourning. <laughs> yep. I'm following in because I want to. It was good knowing you, chicken. Hey, he tosses the bag off the side. Ah, uh, he's got head in. Mm -hmm. Uh, the front desk is empty with a sign that says out. You do see the four cats all sleeping peacefully on the desk. Eleanor's the dragon. They get a scritch, scritch, scritch between the ears. They always enjoy it. <laughs> I love them. Uh, do I know where uh, she might have gone? No. Can I roll to investigate to try to find out? And that should be a 12 because I forgot to put one forward. You're fine. Uh, so my question is, where did it go? <laughs> uh, well, this is going to be a mean answer, kind of. Um, it says it. it the, the, fav the, the book <laughs> says know. it. I know. I'm just like over here, like, I mean, deeper into the library? <laughs> Whenever she puts, if the library is not closed and she has the out sign, she usually is out either helping somebody or gathering research because she's also helping somebody. Okay, guys, let's keep this quick, keep this quiet, and do not engage without others, okay? You get two. Oh, I do get two. Silly, silly. Um... 
What is being concealed here? Uh, underneath a few stacks of books, you do see, um, a few tomes that look, I mean, you know, you've seen old books. You've seen really old books. And then there are fucking tomes of, like, beyond ye old bit. Um, and you see a few of them underneath some stacks of books under death. Not necessarily being hidden, but like put there so no one would just walk off with them by mistake. Oh, I'm going to snatch those right up. Do I understand are... anything? Uh, do you speak German? Nine. That's a yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, the first one is written in German. The other one's written in Latin. And you do see another one that's just written in really old English text, but not like old, old. It's like, well, it looks like around the time the town was founded, honestly. I'll read that one because okay. I don't know Latin or German, but je parle un petit peu français. <laughs> I'll take two scoops. Um, yeah, uh, really faded lettering on the tome. Um, uh, uh, records of the uh, burning of Parker uh, Parker Street. Yeah. Mm. I don't think I have time to speed read, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if there are any pages that have been bookmarked. Well, no. <laughs> it has. It looks like it hasn't been opened except maybe the one time she decided to go through it. But you okay. do have a professor who reads yep. a lot of books right there. I'm going to hand it to Christopher. Tell me what this means. What? Um, oh, <laughs> is it just a brain? <laughs> no. uh. I'm panicking. <laughs> the library is supposed to be a safe place. I'm sorry, looking through the book. <laughs> hey, Callum. Yeah. Your eyes fell on you. Damn it. Are, are they and, still above? Wait, how high is the ceiling in the library? Pretty high. Son of a bitch. It's not coming from above you, though. It's kind of like around you. And Samantha, you're being watched. Is that the cats? And Christopher, you're... Yeah. You start opening this up and you feel like as you hear the crackling of the book as it's opening, you kind of feel like the air tent. That's odd. Oh, I just better get to it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. If that book are reading through with Investigate a Mystery with a plus one, I'll give you because you're a lore library. Okay, thank you. So, plus one, here we go. <laughs> Bye, but at the same time. Alright, here we go. Um, Alright, Investigate a Mystery. Here we go. So, alright, what is being concealed here? Kind of like written throughout it is just kind of like hints throughout to like uh, like what actually happened during the burning of Parker Street. But the overall history of the book details that there was a massive blaze that like maybe twenty or so years into the history of Willoughby Falls that just pretty much went down Parker Street. It took down the grocer, it took down the market. Um um uh, a, a a few like important stables. It took down half of the train station, and it burned down the old, the, the original library where Parker, this current library, is sitting on top of. Uh -huh. Um, but you start going through. There isn't a name for the old library anywhere. That's weird. It's like been stricken. Like crossed out several times. 
Okay. Um, but it's just like it's a unknown thing you said that um, came through and the fire, how the fire started, right? No one knows how the fire started. Okay. Well, um, then you look deeper and it's like it started somewhere, right? Like it's, it honestly <laughs> seems like the whole place just burst into flames. Uh, could I ask as for my second question here is I mean because pretty much what happened here was the fire and stuff like that uh, what sort of creature is it because I know with some books uh, they do some scholars like to speculate on what it could be from anything or if there's anything weird about well, it it was weird because it's the fire never left Parker mm-hmm and it you're looking through older details that's I think this would come up more often but it's just like a small section in the book the fire lasted for seven days okay this is weird um Samantha I think we're dealing with something weird here the, I think Something set Parker Street a fire, and whatever it is, I think it's related to what's been happening with the whole multiples of seven. Did anyone mention dragons directly to Samantha? Not really, no. Dang it. Maybe. And. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so. Nothing. I just. I think I, I'm thinking about what it could possibly be, but what do you think? I think we need to find Miss Whitaker one way or another. Either something's watching her too. Um, and she has a, a founder's last name, so. Meanwhile, Callum is off to the side waving uh, his last singular piece of coat chicken around in the air. All right, you dragon fucks, come on out. Where are you hiding? I know you're watching me. What'd you just say? Huh? Also, if we don't burst into flames, give me that hecking coat. I'm going to wash it. Maybe I'll think about it. But you said dragon? Oh, yeah. What else could it be? I found those uh, scales earlier, and he'll, he'll actually and take those out of the pocket. Confirms it. That confirms it right there. I... Oh, I... Does does that snap it? Does, is there lore associated with dragons and the number seven? Uh, as you have that query, like, enter your mind. Um, the three of you hear a slow clap from deeper in the library. As you see Dante Wiggins come around the corner. Uh, that's so cool. yeah. Dragon! The best you could come up with. What? What? I just that learned was... about this two seconds ago. Well, I'm asking all of you. I mean, it, the shoe fits, but no, no, no. If it was dragons, they'd be much more direct in how they handle you. Ah, there's one thing the... at Dante. <laughs> I mean, the worms, cockatrices. 
And there's another one that people don't talk about very much. Uh, and all of you feel the room slowly heat up as you see a giant toothy grin, sharp pointed teeth and blood red eyes peer over his face. No one ever talks about the degree. And Ooh. directly in front of you, Christopher, you hear all of those cats and that's where we oh. end tonight's session. Oh. God damn it. Me, 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 me. Three, 